I know that this is the 800th video you've probably seen talking about this palette, but today we're going to get into the weeds and really examine, dissect, and assess this palette, and I have a ton of comparisons for you. By the way, if you like this type of analytical makeup content, please consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already. That's pretty much what I do here. To know me is to know that I'm very much involved in the Natasha Denona universe. If you watched my palette collection video, you know the majority of my eyeshadow palette collection is comprised of Natasha Denona palettes. I have all the midi palettes. I just find that for my skills and preferences, the formulas in the palette are so effortless to use. It's made applying eyeshadow overall a lot more accessible and enjoyable for me and because of that I just have a strong connection with the brand and actually recently I was sent an email with a link to apply to their affiliate program. I was so ecstatic and honestly kind of emotional because I've been such a big fan for years at this point. So if you do make a purchase from the Natasha Denona website and you use my affiliate code Seeking Ships, it will save you 15% on your purchase and I will earn a small commission if you use it. Of course no pressure to do so but I really do appreciate the support if you do choose to use it. I'm gonna have time stamps for all the sections of this video because because I know not everyone cares about going in super in depth about every section so feel free to skip around and one other thing I will mention is that I can only speak from my own perspective as someone who has fair skin so I did watch a few videos from other creators who have deeper skin tones than me and I really appreciated hearing their perspectives and I felt they had a lot of valuable feedback so I'm going to link the videos that I personally watched below if you have seen any other videos feel free to let us know in the comments so let's briefly go over the different types of formulas that show up in this palette so we have the CM or creamy matte this is their standard palette powder matte formula. Natasha Denona has two matte formulas. There's the cream to powder and the creamy matte. There are no cream to powder formula shades in this palette. There are seven creamy matte shades. They are called Stone, a light medium warm taupe. Vague, a medium warm dusty rose. Silhouette, a coffee bean brown. Fair, a light misty rose. Wit, light warm rose. Tender, a matte medium taupe. In mesh, a light dusty rose. So some of these are more of like a dove gray and there are two rosy, light muted red in tones. We have a deep neutral brown and then we have a very light, almost like bone colored shade. And I've seen some discourse debating whether this is a warm or cool tone palette. I don't know that I would consider it either. I think it has a mix of some cool tones and some warm tones, but I wouldn't necessarily categorize it as one or the other. Next, the metallic shades, which are denoted with an M. So the metallic shades are generally a more smooth, opaque, metallic or foiled formula. Sometimes they have a bit of sparkle, but overall a small particle size. Now I noticed that the metallic shades in this palette, they feel more finely milled and sheeny rather than foiled or sparkly metallic. They're just like a more shiny satin finish I would describe them. So we have Whisper which is a metallic light nude pink and Travertine which is described as a soft amber. So these two formulas, the creamy matte and the metallic, they've shown up in every Natasha Denona midi palette that has been released to date. The next formula in here is the sparkling foiled formula and I couldn't really find a clear description of this from the brand but it seems like it's similar to their sparkling crystal or K formula but with a more full metallic base. They're very smooth and slick feeling but they have a sparkly high impact finish and varying levels of depth. We first saw this formula introduced in the Love Face and Eye palette which was released this past February 2023 and the next time we saw it was in the Yucca palette which contains three of the sparkling foiled shades. I feel like that's when it was most talked about because people were really shocked and impressed by that formula. So this palette, the I Need a New palette, has three sparkling foiled shades. Ella, which is a warm fawn, Muse, which is a foiled champagne, and Filigree, which is a medium neutral brown. The most high impact I think is Muse, and the other two are both browns with varying levels of depth, and Filigree is a little bit more cool tone. There are two new formulas that were released specifically for this palette. They're both wet effect eyeshadows, and they're described as illuminating any eyeshadow look with an ethereal touch of glistening sparkle. So the first type of wet effect eyeshadow is the sparkling wet effect. What seems to be the defining feature of this is the extremely delicate refined sparkle. The particle size is very small and it feels silky to the touch, but it also has this kind of gossamer finish to it. It's very, 
it's scattered to an extent, but it still has a an overall sheen to it. It just, it feels like it looks very expensive is what I'm trying to say. There are tons of micro sparkles that catch light in a million ways that when it's paired with that sleek, smooth texture, I believe that's what creates a wet looking effect. And compared to these sparkling foil shadows, these feel a lot more refined and delicate. So the two shades that have this effect are Delilah, which is described as a silver brown, and Mia, which is described as an icy pink. And the last shade in here is the Glossy Wet Effect, which I'm struggling to understand this formula. It seems like it's just a slightly less sparkly version of the Sparkling Wet Effect shadow. And based on the, the name of this shadow, I thought it would be a lot more emollient and almost glide onto the lid easily, but I don't find this to be the case. It actually was the hardest to pick up with a brush. I had to use a pretty dense shading brush to pick it up and get an even application. In the color of this, I'll say, I applied this just by itself on my lid to see what it looked like. And on my skin tone, which is a fair olive, neutral-ish skin tone, it was almost like a my lids but better shade. That seems like it would be only applicable for people who have fair to light skin tone. So I don't know, and I don't know what this will look like on different skin tones. So that's just something to keep in mind. But I feel like depending on your skin tone, it could serve different purposes. So let's compare these wet looking shades to some other eyeshadows or items in my collection that I feel also have a wet look effect on the eyes. So I have the three wet looking shades swatched on the back of my hand. I have Delilah on the top, Mia in the middle, which is these are the two sparkly wet look shades. And then Sheen on the bottom, this is the glossy wet look shade. These are just swatched on my bare hand. So first let's do two shades in the Natasha Denona gold palette that I believe create a wet look effect. So we have Sparks. I'm gonna swatch them on this hand. And then Kava. And these are the Crystal Shimmer formula. So the K. So the shades in the gold palette are a little bit of a larger particle size and they're more of like sparkles suspended over a clear base rather than this infusion of like seamlessly blended micro sparkles in a pigment. So I don't know if you can see, these are almost a bit more flaky and they have like a gold reflect. They both have like a gold reflect to them. Kava looks beige in the pan. I'm gonna do some Pat McGrath shades next. So let's start with one from the Mothership 6. I don't know the name of the shade, but it's the astral shade in the bottom right corner. And I'm just gonna swatch this again on my bare hand. So this feels a lot more dry and flaky to the touch. And it's overall a lot more high impact, but it still does have some refinement to it and elegant sparkle. The Natasha Denona shades, having used all of them on my eyes, I can say they are more user friendly, but they're not going to create that same high impact finish. So with the more flaky and larger particle size of the Pat McGrath shade, you do get a more high impact sparkly finish and also because it's a baked formula it's just a completely different effect and then these two shades are in the mothership 10 palette and they are not baked but they're also these like sparkly wet looking topper shades so again these are much larger particle size and they're more PC. they do not feel anywhere near as smooth as the Natasha Denona shades but they also do create a more dimensional and sparkly finish compared to the wet look shades in the Natasha Denona palette Similar to the shades in the gold palette, there are these sparkles suspended over a clear base and you can really see whatever is underneath them shining through. So it's just a completely different effect. Okay, next I wanted to do, this is the Heaven's Dew All Over Glimmer from Sila. This is not a unique product. It's very similar to the Fenty Diamond Bomb or the Makeup by Mario Crystal Reflector. It's like a highlighter or highlighter topper. And it's again these sh these light sparkles suspended over a clear base. So this is like a putty formula. That's the biggest difference right away. But let me swatch them back of my hand so we can see how they compare. So this is probably the most similar to the Natasha Denona shades in terms of refinement of sparkle. But this is more so of that effect of of silver or like light sparkles suspended over a clear base and they're a lot more scattered than in the Natasha Denona shades. 
The Natasha Denona shades also seem to have like slight variations in the tones of the sparkles, whereas this is just like white or like super light silver. And these are my new differences. Like you may not even care about any of this stuff, but I know some of you like me are very passionate about wet looking topper shades, so thought it might be interesting to compare them. Okay, now I have some single shadows. So the first two are from K-Beauty Brands. We'll do them both together. So this top one is the Face Shop Hyper Peach. And I think that if you are looking for just a wet look topper shade without any duochrome shifts that you can buy as a single, K-Beauty and J-Beauty is the way to go. Like there are brands like Etude House, Misha, and so many other brands that have tons of single shadows like this. And they create exactly this effect. Okay, so the top one is is a single shadow from the face shop called Hyper Peach. And the bottom is the Etude House Look At My Eyes Velvet in PK001. So these are probably the most similar you'll find in terms of single shadows that are available for purchase. And this one from the face shop is like pretty spot on for the shade Sheen. And then this one from Etude House is pretty spot on for the shade Mia. They're a bit less refined. The particle size is larger and they're more PC and textured, but I do feel that this is about as close as you're gonna get in terms of a single shadow that's available for purchase. Okay, and now I have some indie single shadows. I knew people will be curious about this since I do focus a lot of my content on indie makeup. I find that my most wet looking single shadows have like a blue or teal reflect. And I think that's just what creates the most mirror like or wet looking sparkle. So I'm going to do these two iridescents first. We have Glow from Cleona Cosmetics. And this is like a teal to blue to purple. And then we have Cake Bomb from Domina Cosmetics. And this is similar, it's just a less saturated teal. These are very different. Obviously, they're not only a lot more high impact, but they have that blue, teal, purple reflect. So it's just a totally different effect. But I thought someone might be curious to see how a shade like this in the Natasha Denona palette would compare to a wet looking indie shadow. I have a few more I want to show you. So the next one is from Glam Shop and this is called Celtic. And I find this is a lot more subdued in terms of the saturation of pigment. Again, this is a little bit more high impact, larger particle size, and it does have a bit of color to it. But I just thought it might be helpful to contextualize what these shadows will look like or maybe you're looking for something specifically like this. And then the last one, I knew some people would want to see this, Ice Blank from my collaboration with Shine by SD Cosmetics. And this has earned a title as a very wet looking single shadow. So with Ice Blank, I believe what creates that wet look effect is the, the contrast in hue between the blue sparkles that are on top. And I don't know if they're gonna pick up on my camera right now, but I have tons of swatches of this. But the blue sparkles over top of this orange iridescent base. This is also a lot more of a dry formula and it's a bit more PC. While the particle size is not very large, it is a somewhat textured shadow. So again, different user experience, different colors and different effect, but the same in the sense that they both create an almost wet look on the eyes. Now that we've done these comparisons, I have palette comparisons and then I'm going to go shade by shade and whole palette and compare it to whatever else is most similar in my collection. First, I think the one that people were asking most about was the Glam palette. So the Glam palette has some similar shades and I'll show you more in depth as we go through in the shade by shade comparisons and maybe I'll swatch them here too. I just want this video to be as easy to navigate as possible so I may have a little bit of repeats in terms of comparisons. Overall, the difference in the palettes as a unit is that the I Need a Nude palette is a lot more rosy tone than the Glam palette. The Glam palette, like the I Need a Nude palette, has some true neutral shades. It has some cool tone shades. There's only one shade that leans a little bit in that rosy territory, and that's this one, Center Eyelid. Should have already shown you swatches of the full palette side by side. But let's take a closer look at some of these shades and see how they compare. So we can do, let's do these like taupey shades, Stone, Tender, and Mesh and we can compare them to some of the taupey shades in here. So we can do crease and transition. I think you can get a sense just when looking at this that there's a lot more rosiness in these shades from the I Need a Nude palette, whereas these are more of like a true dove gray. 
We could also look at the shades of Vague and Wit compared to the shade Blend in here. And again, you can see it's a lot more neutral compared to the I Need a Nude shades, which are more rosy leaning. This one's a lot more vibrant, actually. Let's look at some of these shimmers. Okay, I'm not gonna label anything at this point because I'm gonna have a separate part with everything labeled. So let's just do, let's do these brown shimmers compared to the browns in the Glam palette. So we have, these are the two sparkling foiled shades, Ella and Filigree, and then let's do Delilah. And just for funsies, let's do the shade Travertine, which is the metallic shade. So here are the four brown shimmers from the I Need a Nude palette. And let's do in the Glam palette, the, this outer eyelid shade on top. <sighs> let's do this one called also outer eyelid. It's another brown. And this one is like kind of a gray, but let's just do it for fun. So again, I think this illustrates the tonal differences between the two palettes, but let's just do the rest of the, the shimmers in here since these are probably the most similar out of all the palettes. This video is going to be a bitch to edit. Let's do the last shimmers in here. We might as well just do all of them for the palette that people are most curious about. So let's do Whisper, Muse, Sheen, Mia. So these are all the lighter shimmers in the I Need a Nude palette. And let's do, okay, so I think Center Eyelid is going to be one. Inner Corner, I hate the way these are named. We'll do this Inner Corner one. And we'll do these two. Why not? As you can see, these are a little bit more metallic rather than dimensional and sparkly in terms of the actual, like, texture and finish and also there are subtle tonal differences not as pronounced as with the mattes because these are so light it's hard to see like major tonal differences but hopefully this illustrates the differences i mean depending on your collection and who you ask it may be redundant to own both of these and i do think that the glam palette is probably better in terms of the range of depth and the amount of versatility you can get out of these mattes. Also, personal preferences will play a huge role. As you can see, like, I treasure my glam palette. I have gotten so much use out of it. I can already tell you right now I'm going to get a ton of use out of this palette because I love these tones. But anyway, that's going to be the most in-depth in terms of palette comparisons. Let's go to the next palette. Okay, next we're going to do the retro palette, which is my number one favorite Natasha Denona palette ever. So the Retro palette definitely has some similar shades, but as you can see overall, the tone is more pink, more purple, more mauve -y. Compared to the Retro palette, this I Need a New palette does come across a lot more neutral. There are some shades that I think are worth taking a look at closer together. For the mattes, let's look at these kind of gray, muted tones. Let's take a look at the shades Stone and Mesh, Vague and Wit and actually tender too. So stone, mesh, tender, vague, wit. Okay, so I have stone, mesh, tender, vague, wit. I think nude mauve is worth taking a look at close to these top two shades. And it's really similar to stone, but I see more of a, a mauviness in it, as one might infer from the name of it. It also seems to have more depth to it. Let's take a look at the shade Vivian next to Mesh. Okay, so Vivian is lighter, and it has more pink to it. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera. Opart next to Tender. This is a cream to powder shade. It has more depth to it, and I feel like it's got more of a rosy undertone and then let's do the shades go go which is a cream to powder and amara next to these bottom two shades so definitely a lot more rosy and more and more saturated overall but a similar vibe if you're looking at just these mats in isolation based on my impressions right now and what i feel will be my overall impression of the palette if i had to keep just one retro 10 out of 10 times this is my favorite palette ever from natasha denona another one that i have like used to death i've hit pan in on the shade andy for the shimmers um i'm just gonna do the shade delilah next to the shade jude 
because I feel like these are similar in tone. And I don't know if you can see the amount of dimension that Delilah has compared to Jude. Jude is one of my favorite shades ever for layering, so I wouldn't want it to have all these sparkles in it, but hopefully it can help you understand the tone and finish of this wet look shade. I also think it might be interesting to compare the shade Mia with the shade Psychedelic. So Mia is the sparkling wet effect shade. Psychedelic, I believe, is a crystal shade. So here's Mia on this side, and here is Psychedelic on this side. Definitely similar, but Mia has a bit more of a refined sparkle. But here these are. I think that's it for comparing these two palettes. Something else I think is interesting, I feel like this should be the Retro Glam palette. Because look at this. Like, this makes more sense to me as the Retro Glam palette. Because it has, like, the mauviness from the Retro palette. And then these, like, somewhat neutral shades from the Glam palette. I thought people might want to see the My Dream palette which doesn't have too much overlap, but we're taking a look at. My Dream palette has some similar tones, but overall a much better range of depth. I feel like this color story as a unit is much more inclusive and versatile, but let's take a closer look at some of these shades and see how they compare. I'm probably gonna hit pan on some of these shades just from swatching them so many times, but doing it for science. Let's do the shades Stone and Tender. Then let's do these two like rosy shades, Vague and Wit, and the shades Silhouette. And I wanna see these face to face with the shade Nurture from the My Dream palette. Then I wanna see these two like peachy rosy shades carpe diem and unity and then finally i want to see the shade aspiration okay so here are the mattes side by side definitely a lot of similarity here i'd say okay so nurture is less cool tone compared to the two mattes in the i need a nude palette then these two carpe diem and unity they're kind of like a mirror of wit and vague from the i need a nude palette but they're more peachy and a little bit more saturated. So not exactly dupes, but they are similar, especially with that similar difference of depth. Aspiration has more depth than the deepest shade in the I Need a Nude palette. So like I said, this palette overall, like I think maybe if you have a deeper skin tone and you're concerned about um, how the shades in this palette will look on you, I would recommend going for the My Dream palette instead. I feel like you can definitely achieve similar effects with this palette compared to the I Need a New palette. Let's get into the shimmer shades too because I'm curious about those. So I want to see, there's a few things I want to see in here. I want to see how the shade at Travertine, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, compares to the shade Serenity from the My Dream palette. I feel like there's a bit of similarity in tone, but the amount of depth in effect is totally different. Another thing I wanted to see is I wanted to take a look at these shades. There are two shades in here, Thrill and Babies, and these are a formula that are called Duochrome Sparkle or DCS. The only other time we've seen this formula is in the pastel palette, but these have a very like dimethicone feeling to them, which the shade in the pastel palette does not, but I digress. I want to see how these compare to some of the shades in the I Need a Nude palette. So let's do the shade Muse, Sheen, and Mia and see how they compare to these two duochrome sparkle shades from the My Dream palette. So here's Muse, Sheen. Okay, now let's do, this is Thrill and Babies from the My Dream palette. These have a more slick emollient feeling to them that I thought I would see in the shade Sheen, but Sheen is more of like a dry, densely packed shade compared to what I was expecting. But here they are compared, and that's it for the My Dream palette. Okay, honestly, I don't know why I chose to do the Retro Glam as like a full palette comparison, because if you look at these side by side, they're definitely very different. It might help to contextualize the tones and level of depth in the I Need a Nude palette because the Retro Glam palette has been some criticism for lacking depth and inclusivity in the shades. The only place we really see depth is in these two sh metallic shades. Now that I've shown you them side by side, let's compare just a few of the specific shades in here. There's not too much that I think is worth taking a closer look at. So let's do these two rosy shades, Vague and Wit, once again. And let's compare them 
to the two pink shades in the Retro Glam palette. So let's do the deeper one, Belle on top, and then Holly. So as you can see, these are a lot more of a cool toned pink. Like the ones in the I Need a New palette almost look peach compared to the ones in the Retro Glam palette. I mean, the only other one I feel like we should take a look at, and I feel like maybe I include one later on, but for right now, let's do the shade Mia, this wet look shade, compared to Flutter from the Retro Glam palette. Here they are on my finger. Now let's swatch them both. This is Mia and this is Flutter. And Flutter is one of the crystal effect shades. So here they are side by side. Again, similar but different. Mia, you can see, is a lot more pink here. And it has that more refined sparkle. Don't take a shot every time I say refined. And then Flutter is more of like a PC flaky sparkle. But that's it for this. Okay, I have one more Natasha Denona palette, and then I have a few from other brands I want to show you. The Biba palette is overall a lot more warm leaning. The top two, the top row is this more like yellow orange row. The middle row is a little bit more of a reddened baked clay tones. And then the bottom row has some true cool tones and neutrals. Let's take a look at, I feel like we're going to end up swatching this, these shades of Vague and Wit in every comparison because they're kind of hard to understand. So we'll do Vague and Wit. Let's compare them to Tone and Buff from the Biba palette. So these compared to the ones in the I Need a Nude palette seem a lot more peachy, I feel like. And they make the ones in the I Need a Nude palette look more rosy. Very interesting how tones, like color theory, how tones look within the context of other colors. Let's do the shade Fair compared to Tusk. Okay, so the shade Tusk looks a lot more beige, almost like camel compared to fair. That's not a good swatch. Let me do another layer of that. Okay, so you can see. See, I wasn't really seeing the pink they described in it before, but now that I see it next to the shade Tusk, I really see that pink undertone. Okay, and then let's do, let's do these grayish shades compared to the grays in the Biba palette. So we've got stone, mesh, and then we'll do tender. Okay, and let's do Sculpture and Tour. Sculpture, Tour. Okay, so you can really see the tonal differences here. So I feel like these look like dove grays in the palette, but when you compare them to like true neutral grays, I see a big difference. And then the last one I want to do is Silhouette versus Seed. Okay, these are really similar. I don't really have much to say about them. But okay, here are some similar mattes in these two palettes. These are the most ugly swatches I've ever done in my life. Let's move on to some palettes from other brands. Okay, this is an interesting one. And I don't know how many people have compared these. I don't know if I'm being innovative by doing this or if I'm just like one of many. But the Moonless Seduction palette from Pat McGrath, I feel like these kind of have similar vibes. Now, the Moonless Seduction palette has a lot more depth and range in just 10 shades. But let's take a look at some shades. I think really the only ones worth comparing. Let's do Silhouette and Tender. I don't know the names of these Pat McGrath shades. I don't have them memorized, maybe someday. But this deep matte in the Moonless Seduction palette compared to these. Okay, I mean, it looks a little bit cooler toned. It's about the same depth as Silhouette, but it's a lot cooler tone, pretty much. Okay, and then mm, let's do the shade Vague compared to this map. This, again, has more depth, and it does look a little bit more rosy toned. So that's interesting for the map. And then there's a couple of the shimmers I wanted to compare it to. I already did the wet look ones before, so let's do, I'm curious about these two, Ella, Filigree, and Delilah, compared to these two of the shimmers from the like regular shimmers in the Moonlit Seduction palette. So we got this one and this one. Oh, very interesting. Very interesting. This looks like a straight up silver compared to the browns in the I Need a New palette. And then the other one I wanted to see, so I already compared the wet look shades, but I wanted to see Muse compared to this shade. Okay, another interesting comparison 
This one looks more dimensional, whereas this looks like a more flat sheen. Both beautiful. Very interesting. Okay. We've got a few more palettes. We're almost done. <laughs> Next, we have the Huda Beauty. Holy shit. Huda. Huda. Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette. This one was interesting to see side by side because I feel like there are some very similar aspects, but the overall vibe is quite different. The Rose Quartz Palette is much more pink and mauve leaning, and it has some similar shades with these like dove gray tones and these rosy leaning mauve shades, but then it has these pops of vibrant pink and purple in it. It also has a lot more of a range in terms of the textures, finishes, and colors of the shimmer shades. So again, let's go ahead and get into comparing these mattes. So you already know we got to do Vague and Wit from the I Need a Nude palette. So we got Vague, Wit, okay? And I'm right away, Aura and Gratitude are jumping out at me. Wow, these looked a lot more similar in the pans, but these are very rosy compared to the I Need a Nude shades. These again look kind of peachy compared to the ones in the Huda Beauty palette. Some other ones I was curious about. Um, I want to do these two like grayish tones. Let's actually do all three of the like gray ones. Stone, Mesh, and Tender. Okay. Stone, Mesh, Tender. And I wanted to do them next to Precious, Radiate, and let's just do Mantra, Mantra, just for funsies. Okay, very different, very different. These are overall a lot more cool tone and rosy leaning compared to the I Need a Nude palette. Okay, now I have a few shimmers I'd like to see. I really wanna see the shade Muse, and I do compare this later, I believe. I wanna see the shade Muse compared to two shades in here, Blissful and Energized. Blissful is a duochrome, and then Energized I think is just a regular metallic. So this almost looks like a combination of these two, but also warmer tone. The shade Delilah, this like cooler toned shade compared to Abundance. Okay, this is like a straight up purple compared to the I Need a Nude shade. I think that's it for the shimmers. Uh, actually, one more, one more. Let's do Mia, one of the wet look shades compared to Moon Magic. This is a duochrome. Very different. This is a lot more saturated and reflective and not as finely milled. But just interesting to see. I think the Rose Quartz palette is a lot more interesting in terms of all that the palette offers. But the I Need a Nude palette is more intuitive and like you don't really have to think to use it from what I've experienced. So, okay. I have two more palettes. <laughs> Almost done. This is a Viseart Neutral Mattes. This is an all matte palette, but I thought it might be interesting because I know a lot of people have or are familiar with this palette. I thought it might help to give context to the tones in this palette and help you determine how they might relate to things you already own or have an understanding of. I'm not really sure what should we compare in terms of shades in here. I mean, I feel like there's not too much actual overlap. We could do the shade Fair, the shade Fair next to like this tone in here. I mean, they're pretty spot on. We could do Tender next to this one. A lot more cool tone. And then I guess we can do Silhouette versus this one. Okay. Again, horrible swatches, but hopefully that can just show you some similarities and differences between the palettes. Okay, one more palette I want to compare. Oh my god. The Sydney Grace California Coast Palette. I feel like this is probably the closest in terms of the tones and undertones. The main difference here is the finishes of the the metallics and sparkly shades. Sydney Grace historically has a very thick and opaque metallic formula. Not my favorite. I like their more satiny shades, but they don't have the like pieciness or the ability to diffuse out and create a wash of sparkles. Like they're just more straight up foiled metallics. So if you like that, you might want to consider the Sydney Grace palette instead. But I think the mattes are where we're going to see the most overlap. So I think the ones that are worth taking a closer look at are Stone versus Butterfly Beach. So Butterfly Beach is a lot more of a true gray. Also, I'm curious about Wit and Vague versus Laguna. 
And then I guess we can do, why not? Glass Beach, Malibu versus Silhouette. Okay. And then you should have seen earlier how the metallics in this formula compare. Like I said, they're a lot more thick and opaque. So depending on your preferences, maybe that's a selling point. For me, it's just not my favorite. Now we're going to jump into the shade by shade comparisons. And I'm going to have labels up the entire time on the screen so you can screenshot at any point. There's going to be a lot of information coming at you, so it's probably going to be easy to lose track of what you're looking at. So that's why I'm keeping the labels up on the screen. Feel free, if you haven't given this video a thumbs up already, to give it a thumbs up because adding the labels, if you edit videos, you know, it's one of the most time consuming parts of editing a video. Starting with mattes, from left to right, we have Vintage Taupe from the Natasha Denona Mini Retro Palette, which is similar in tone, but lighter. Nude Mauve from the Midi Retro Palette, which is cooler toned and about the same depth. Belle from the Retro Glam Palette, which is a lot more of a straight up pink. Carpe Diem from the My Dream Palette, which is similar in depth, but a lot more peachy and saturated. And then Vague from the I Need a Nude Palette. Next, we're comparing Mesh and Stone from the I Need a Nude Palette to some Natasha Denona mattes. First, we have Nude Mauve again from the Midi Retro Palette, which is deeper and more mauve compared to these two shades. Sculpture from the Biba Palette, which as you can see is a lot more of a neutral, true gray. Nurture from the My Dream Palette is more of a true neutral, so it's warmer compared to these shades in the I Need a Nude Palette. And then Crease from the Glam Palette is deeper and less rosy. Next, we have comparisons for the shade Fair in the I Need a Nude palette. First, we have Tusk from the Biba palette, which is a lot more warm tone. It's like a camel compared to Fair. Lucy from the Retro Glam palette is a similar depth, but it has a lot more green in it. Vivian from the Retro palette has a lot more pink in it, but again, it's a similar depth. And then Mod is a lot lighter, it has a lot more white in it, and it's more pink. Okay, here's probably the most similar looking group of matte comparisons. I feel like Natasha Denona palettes have a lot of tones like this in them. So first we have Go-Go from the Retro palette, which is a cream to powder shade, and it's deeper and more rosy. Next we have Tone from the Biba palette, which is less rosy compared to Wit. Next we have Plush from the Mini Biba palette. This is really almost spot on. It's just slightly warmer tone. And then Unity from the My Dream palette, again, really, really similar, just a hair deeper. Okay, here are some comparisons for the shade Tender. These are all Natasha Denona palette shades. First, we have Tor from the Biba palette. This is a cream to powder shade. It's deeper and a lot more neutral. Next, we have Opart from the Retro palette. This is another, this is another cream to powder shade. It's a bit deeper and it has more mauviness and warmth to it. Next, we have Smoke from the Glam palette. This is deeper and it has more of a neutral brown tone. Less rosy compared to Tender from the I Need a Nude palette. Last matte comparisons, these are all Natasha Denona shades once again, and we're comparing them to Silhouette from the I Needed Nude palette. First we have Log from the Gold palette, pretty similar, but it's more of a neutral brown. Deep Dive from the Bronze palette is a cream to powder shade, and it has more warmth and almost like a reddened quality to it. Seed from the Biba palette is similar, just a little bit more neutral. Lash Line from the Glam palette is a lot cooler tone, similar depth. Aspiration from the My Dream palette is a little bit more cool tone. And then Bruno from the Mini Biba palette is pretty spot on. If anything, maybe it's slightly rosier in tone, but the depth and overall like tone of it are really, really similar. Okay, so for shimmers, we're starting with Whisper from the I Need a Nude palette, and we're comparing it again to all Natasha Denona shades. First, we have Monroe from the Biba palette, which is a lot warmer toned. Inner Corner from the Glam palette, which is, again, a little bit warmer tone. I feel like it has some green to it almost compared to Whisper. And then Oscar from the Retro Glam has an olive undertone to it. These are all similar depth, but I mentioned before, the metallics in the I Need a Nude palette are more like thin and sheeny compared to other metallic Natasha Denona shades. Okay, next, Travertine from the I Need a Nude palette, which seems like it would be a really common type of metallic shade, but it was actually pretty hard to find an exact duplicate of in my palette. So first we have Browbone from the Glam palette, which is more like gold, I guess. Uh, Bronze Seduction from the Moonlit Seduction palette from Pat McGrath, which is warm, warmer toned. And then Serenity from the My Dream palette, which is similar tone, but deeper. And again, none of these are that thin, sheeny metallic formula. 
Okay, now here we have comparisons for the shade Sheen from the I Need a Nude palette, which is the glossy wet look shade. So first we have Kava from the Natasha Denona Gold palette, which has more of a dispersed and scattered sparkle. Blitz Venus from the Moonlit Seduction palette, which is kind of similar, but not as much of a glossy finish. Thrill from the Natasha Denona My Dream palette, which feels more slick and emollient, but it's not as reflective and it's a different tone. And then Inner Corner from the Glam palette, which is thicker and a different tone and not as reflective. Here are comparisons for the shade Ella, which is one of the sparkling fold shades. First we have Rustic from the Biba palette, which is a lot warmer tone. It almost has like a gold reflect to it and not as sheeny or reflective. Outer Eyelid from the Glam palette, which is a very similar tone, but it doesn't have that sparkling fold finish. Helio from the Retro palette, which is lighter and rosier. It is one of the more reflective metallic shades, but it doesn't have that sparkling aspect to it that the sparkling foiled formula does. Okay, next we have Filigree, which is one of the other sparkling foiled shades. So we have Frozen Brown from Glam Shop, which is really similar in terms of texture and finish. The only difference is it's a hair lighter. Next we have Mocha Twilight from Terra Moons. The asterisk indicates that it was gifted to me in PR. This is a lot cooler toned, deeper, and it feels more emollient. Next we have Elysian from the Natasha Denona Yucca palette. This is the, another sparkling foiled shade. This is a lot cooler tone but same texture and finish. Then we have Outer Eyelid from the Glam palette. It is cooler tone and a slightly different finish. It's a little bit less sparkly. Here's Delilah. This is one of these sparkly wet look shades from the I Need a Nude palette. First I have Tomback from Glam Shop which is really similar effect but a much lighter base. Then I have Guilty Pleasure from the Pat McGrath Bronze Seduction palette. Not quite as dimensional or sparkly but similar in that it has that brown base with the suspended sparkles over it. Okay, now we're comparing Mia, which is the other sparkly wet look shade. First, we have Kaba from the Natasha Denona Gold palette. Again, it's more of a scattered sparkle, and it has more of a gold reflect. Astral Lilac Aura from Pat McGrath Moonlit Seduction is less pink, and again, more of a scattered sparkle. Flutter from the Retro Glam palette is, again, more of a scattered sparkle, and it's more neutral in tone. doesn't really have that pink effect to it. PK001 from Etude House is probably the most similar out of all of these, but it's more of a large particle size and it has a bit of texture to it. Psychedelic from the Natasha Denona Retro Palette is also pretty similar, but it has a few like blue and other colored flecks of sparkle throughout it and it's not as a glossy finish as Mia. Okay, last group for Muse. I thought I would have a bunch of dupes to this and they did seem like dupes at first, but once I swatched them side by side, I do see my new differences. So first we have Rubidium from Terra Moons. This is not only a different tone, but it's a lot more foiled and thick than Muse. Fire Hunt from Davina, again, is a different tone. It's much cooler tone and it's very thick, very chunky different effect overall. I wouldn't consider this a wet looking shade. Next we have Angel Wings from Luxie Beauty, which is a lot more of a dimethicone shade, but it is pretty similar. It's just not that same wet look. It's more just like a really sparkly dimensional shade. Definitely not as refined as Muse, but it's also a $3 eyeshadow. So it's a great deal if you're looking for something that has a similar effect. Next, Satellite from Glam Shop. I feel like this is a most similar finish, but it's a lot warmer toned. Hyper Peach from The Face Shop. This is actually more similar to Sheen, and I do compare them in the first section with the wet look shades. So this is not really super similar at all. And then Galaxia from the Natasha Jonah Mini Retro Palette. I feel like this is the similar base and sparkle colors. It's just not as high impact. It's more of a like subdued version of Muse. Okay, wow, that was a lot. <laughs> That's going to be it for this video. I hope you like it. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And other than that, I will see you in the next one. Bye!